All right, everyone. So today, let's really dig into the clan boss and what are going to be the best rare champions for a successful clan boss composition. Now, in order to make a good clan boss team, though, it's really important to make sure that your champions work well together because there are certain roles that you're looking to fill. And if you don't have those roles filled, then your team is going to underperform. So even if you have a bunch of good champions that are all good individually, if they don't work well together, you're still going to be underperforming significantly. So before we really get into the actual individual champions, it's important to know what are going to be the specific roles that you need to fill in the clan boss for your team to work well together. So let's talk about that really quickly. And this is going to be a more detailed, longer video. So I might end up splitting this into two parts. Uh, there's really three different categories of things that you're looking for. So we'll probably talk about the first two in the video today and then save the last one uh, for a whole separate video because there's a whole lot to get into that on its own. But the things that you're going to be looking for are strong debuffs and buffs. Now, there's five of them that I have here, and there is kind of a little bit of a priority list. It's not inc incredibly important which one is slightly better than the other one. You're still going to want to try to get as many of them as you can. Uh, but also, debuffs are probably slightly better than buffs as well. If you're wondering why, uh, it's because your team is going to have relatively more speed compared to the actual clan boss, which means you're going to be taking more turns. So the actual debuffs that you apply, if you have a debuff that lasts for two turns, for example, and then you have a buff that lasts for two turns, because you're going to be acting more frequently compared to the clan boss, your buffs are going to be expiring quicker, you're going to get less longevity from them, and the debuffs are actually going to have slightly more application. Again, it's not really a huge difference, but if you do want a slight priority list, um, I do have it up on the screen here. So the five that you're going to be looking to fill, of course, the strong versions of them, if possible, are going to be weaken and decrease defense. Uh, those two are very important because if you have them both up on the clan boss, you're going to notice that the damage that you do from all your other champions is, is going to be significantly higher. So if you can, not only try to get one of them, but definitely try to get them both. Next up is going to be decrease attack. This is going to be important, of course, as you continue the fight. He's going to ramp up his damage, and if you don't have a decrease attack, you're probably going to be dying a lot sooner than you would expect. Uh, increased defense is going to be pretty much the same effect as decreased attack. It's going to give you more survivability, stay alive longer, and then increased attack is going to be just simply more DPS as well. So very important. Try to get as many of them as you can, and it might seem crazy, but even with rare champions, you could pretty much fill out all of these buffs and debuffs and pretty much the strong version of most of them as well and still have a lot of room for additional DPS poisoners, HP burns, and, and things of that nature. So this is absolutely possible to do very well with just rare champions. The next step on the list is going to be a strong aura. And in my opinion, out of these three different categories, this is probably going to be the one point where I think rare champions are lacking a little bit. Now, buffs and debuffs, there are plenty of amazing rares that can fill all these roles. And DPS, now more than ever, especially with the revamp to um, that new rare, uh, Frozen Banshee, uh, there are so many amazing DPS, HG burn, damage dealing rares, but strong auras, a little bit on the weaker side. There's still some choices out there. Of course, if you can get a speed aura, that's almost always going to be the recommended one. But if you cannot get a speed aura or you don't have a really good one, um, you're going to want to go with something along the lines of whatever your champions are. If they're defense or HP based, you can use a defense or HP aura. Uh, you can use a crit percentage aura, make it a little bit easier to gear up. Those are probably going to be the best alternative options to speed. And of course, the third category, which is probably going to be a whole separate video on its own because there's a lot to get into, is just strong DPS. And now more than ever, there are so many options with uh, Poison, HP Burn, of course, Giant Slayer, War Master, important, and uh, good gear and good stats on your champions. And rares can absolutely outperform tons of epics and legendaries. Now is the best time to actually make a super strong clan boss team that can easily do what a lot of the great teams out there that are full of epics and legendaries. Okay, so now that we've gone over the important components of a clan boss team, you guys know how important it is to really have these things work together or your team's just not going to do very well. Now we can actually get into the individual champions themselves. And let's start off with that first debuff, uh, Weaken. Now I want to talk about a champion that is absolutely phenomenal. And honestly, out of all the champions that I'm going to talk about in both the videos, DPS, buffs, debuffs, aura, this guy's probably going to be one of the best out of all the options out there because he fills so many roles for the clan boss. And we're going to go to the dwarves here, and it's going to be Bulwark. Now Bulwark is amazing. So on his auto attack, he has a weaken. 
Sure, it's not the strong version of Weaken, but it's still a Weaken debuff on his auto attack, which is huge. If you can fight a champion that has this, this is going to be a great addition to the clan boss. Uh, he's also a defensive-based champion. Now, his second ability is an HP burn as well. Very strong. That's going to be a lot of additional DPS. Now, the only consideration with HP burn is you can only have one champion that applies this. So, right now, the big toss-up between rares for HP burn is going to be between Bulwark and Coffin Smasher. So, if you're already using Coffin Smasher, you definitely don't want to add Bulwark because you're just going to use you lose a lot of usefulness. Uh, and then, if you have Bulwark, of course, you're probably not going to want to use Coffin Smasher. So, you do kind of have to pick and choose between uh, those two champions, but... Um, Bulwark is definitely a very solid choice. And then his third ability is when attacked has a 30% chance of extending the duration of all debuffs on the attacker by one turn. This is huge. Again, now more than ever with the revamp of that new rare uh, Frozen Banshee, extend debuffs are phenomenal. So he's just got everything that works super well for the clan boss. He also has a defensive aura. Um, which if you don't have a good speed orb, definitely not a terrible substitute choice. Defense-based champion, just this guy was really built, built to be a, a, a solid, rare clan boss champion. So, all right, next up on the choice is something that you might not really expect, but I want to tell you guys why this guy is actually a, a better choice now than he used to be a couple weeks ago, and it's going to be Grappler. So Grappler is also a defense-based champion, very similar to Bulwark. He has that weaken on his auto attack. Now, it is a pretty low chance of activating, as you can see. However, if you have the mastery and you book him, he's a rare champion, so book shouldn't be too big of a problem. It lasts for two turns, and remember that debuffs are a little bit better because the clan boss is going to have lower speed relative to how frequently your champions are acting, so you shouldn't really have too much of a problem keeping this up most of the time even with the low chance to activate. Uh, I think the biggest problem is just make sure that you actually have the accuracy for whatever clan boss encounter that you're doing. It's still a weaken on the auto attack, which is really, really nice. Now, his second ability is a weak poison. So attacks one enemy two times. Each hit has a 50% chance that you can boost up to 80% with skill books in the mastery, uh, placing two 2.5% poison debuffs for two turns. You can lower that down to a three-turn cooldown. Now, yes, it is the weak version of poison. However, with the revamp of that uh, champion frozen banshee, just having a lot of stacks of poison now are, are going to be better now more than ever. A couple weeks ago, this guy probably wasn't quite as high on the list, but now that he has uh, these poison debuffs on his second ability, a weaken on his auto attack, he's definitely not a terrible addition. His third skill places a shield buff on all allies equal to 20% of their HP and a reflect damage buff on all allies for two turns. I mean, hey, it's something. Uh, a little bit of extra survivability, but he's got two good components that work pretty well together for the clan boss. So definitely not a bad choice. Now, if he was like an attack-based champion, he probably wouldn't be on this list, but uh, because he's defense-based, you can definitely make him work pretty well. Now, another champion that I want to talk about is actually a starter, and we're going to go to the sacred order for this one here. And it's going to be... Athel or Athel. Now, she is also very strong because she is the only rare champion, to my knowledge, that has the strong version of the weakened debuff. And she attacks three times as well. So, very good for Giant Slayer. Attacks one enemy three times. You can get that up to 100% chance of placing the strong 25% weakened debuff for two turns on the last hit. So, this is really going to be the main thing that makes Athel or Athel shine for the clan boss is her strong weakened on an auto attack or a one whatever you want to call it that attacks three times her other abilities really aren't focused specifically around the clan boss and aoe which of course you guys know that's not going to be too great for the clan boss this ability is nice a little bit of extra stats uh, gives her an extra turn so you don't really have to worry about any drawback to this ability but uh, this alone makes her a good contender if you put good gear on her you have giant slayer on her she's definitely going to perform very well she also has an HP aura as well, so if you don't have a good speed champion or your team mostly comprises of HP-based champions, you can always use that. Even though it's a little bit weak, it's still better than nothing. So that's going to be pretty much all of the decent rare choices for getting that weakened debuff. Now let's move on to uh, the decreased defense. Uh, we're going to go to the Undead Hordes, talk about Grave Chill Killer. Now, Grave Chill Killer is going to synergize extremely well with Frozen Banshee. And I'm going to talk a lot more about Frozen Banshee when I get into the DPS component of this video. But Grave Chill Killer is still a very good champion. She's going to offer several different things for the clan boss. So, 
Uh, you've got this attack zone enemy has a 40%, which you can boost up to 55% with uh, skill books and the mastery, uh, placing a 5% poison for one turn. So you got a poison on the auto attack. You have the uh, decreased defense. So here we go. Now, it should be the strong version of the decreased defense right here if they have a poison debuff. And, of course, she has a poison debuff on her auto attack. So you should basically always be able to apply this right here. So poison on the auto attack, strong version of decreased defense, which is one of the uh, debuffs you're really going to want for the clan boss. And also attacks one enemy two times. Each hit places a weak poison or a strong poison if they have a poison sensitivity debuff. So this is why she synergizes very, very well with Frozen Banshee, who, of course, is going to have that poison sensitivity debuff. So very good champion. Definitely a fantastic contender for that decreased defense. Now let's move on to the Barbarians here. And let's go to, let's see, War Maiden. No, not Marked. I'll talk about Marked later. I know they look similar. War Maiden, here we go. War Maiden is also a very decent choice for the clan boss. So you've got a weak version of the poison on the auto attack. And uh, again, ever since that revamp of uh, Frozen Banshee, even the weak versions of poison have had their utility increased a little bit right here. So it's still a poison on the auto attack, which is really nice. Um, sure, it's 30% chance to activate. She is an attack-based champion, so that is something to be mindful of. She's going to be a bit more squishy, so definitely make sure uh, that she isn't dying really early compared to all your other team members. Now, she has this, uh, places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion and an extra hit if this attack is critical. It's only on this champion, so it's not an AoE increased attack. If you have a lot of crit on her, you uh, should be able to attack twice with it, but... Uh, I wouldn't really worry too much about this ability. It's a nice little boost, but her third ability is going to be really nice for the clan boss. So attacks all enemies, AoE, not really super relevant, but it does have that 100% chance with books uh, to place the strong version of decreased defense. So once again, you fill that role of decreased defense for the clan boss, and you also have a poison on the auto attack, which is going to be doing a good chunk of additional DPS. So definitely a reasonable substitution to Grave Chill Killer if you don't have her. And uh, next up, we are going to go to the Skinwalkers here. And there's one other reasonable choice for decreased defense, and that is going to be another newer champion, this guy right here, Fleshmonger. So uh, his attack one is attacks one enemy three times. Nothing too phenomenal, but it will work decent with um, Giant Slayer. Second ability is places an increased attack and increased crit rate for two turns, gains an extra turn. That's nice, so this kind of doesn't have a drawback. It's just some bonus stats for him. But his third ability right here is what's going to make him a decent choice for the clan boss if you don't have one of the other champions I talked about. Attacks all enemies has a 50% chance of placing a 60% decreased defense debuff for two turns. And you can see you can boost that up to, uh, I believe, 80% with skill books and uh, the mastery. So another reasonable choice. I still think that Grave Chill Killer is probably the best out of the ones that I've mentioned. But if you don't have her or you don't want to use her, you've got uh, Warp Maiden and Fleshmonger as some reasonable alternatives. All right, so now let's move on to minus attack, which is going to be really important for your survivability. And this is where we get to talk about Coffin Smasher, who's going to be in the Night Revenant. So, all right, let's see. Coffin Smasher. This guy right here, phenomenal clan boss champion. This guy, once again, was, was just built to be a solid clan boss rare. HP-based champion, so he's going to be more survivable than attack. And he does have that strong version of decreased attack on his auto. Now, it's only 15%. However, you can boost it up to 30% with skill books, 35% with the mastery, and because the clan boss is going to be taking less turns relative to your team's uh, speed, then you should still not have too much of a problem keeping this debuff active. And his second ability right here, Attacks on Enemy, has that 50% chance of placing the HP burn debuff for two turns. So you fill that role. This is why I said if you guys have Coffin Smasher, you probably don't want to use Bulwark. If you have Bulwark, you probably don't want to use Coffin Smasher. So um, he's going to fill that checkbox uh, for HP burn. And then his third skill right here decreases the damage enemies inflict with AoE attacks by 5%. A little bit extra survivability right there. So that's going to be the best choice, in my opinion, for minus attack. But there are some other alternatives. If we go to Orcs, let's see. Orcs, we are going to go to Veteran. So Veteran is a reasonable choice. He does have that strong version of decreased attack on his auto, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about not having it apply and then go on cooldown and then not have it for a few turns. Uh, he's defense-based as well, so he's going to be survivable. 
Uh, let's see, crit rate on all allies if the target's killed. This really isn't going to do that much in the clan boss, unfortunately. Uh, block buffs is, is kind of okay. Uh, damage increases according to this champion's max HP. It is based off of defense and HP, so if you build this guy really tanky, you'll be able to see some pretty reasonable DPS numbers. But the main reason why you would use this guy is for that decreased attack on his auto. If you either decide not to use Coffin Smasher or you don't have him, you can't fill this role. This guy is a... Uh, reasonable substitution. Unfortunately, his aura is not really going to do anything for the clan boss, though. Next up, we're going to go to the Lizardmen, and again, another substitution uh, if you decide not to use Coffin Smasher. Uh, let's see if I remember this guy's icon. Here we go, Bogwalker, defense base. This guy's kind of like the weaker old version of uh, Coffin Smasher. He does have that decreased attack on his... Uh, you know, auto attack right here. It does have a slightly higher chance of uh, activating as well, which is nice. He does have an increased defense buff on all allies for two turns, but it is the weaker version, so that is something to be mindful of. It's still nice if you don't have any kind of increased defense buff on your team. It's, it's better than nothing, but you're probably eventually going to want to have some way to get the strong version rather than the weak version, especially when you get to you know the, the later stages of mid-game and, and, and end-game. And then he has his um, passive places reflect damage on allies when attacked with a crit. Again, this guy's really mostly just to fill that decrease attack roll right there. So, uh, And then the last choice for decrease attack um, is going to be Runic Warder. Let's see this guy right here. HP based. His auto attack's not that great. Attacks an enemy two times. And then he has his decrease attack right here. So each hit has a 30% chance that you can boost the skill books. Uh, placing that decrease attack debuff for two turns. So he fills that role. It's not on the auto attack, so that's something to be mindful of. So if it does somehow uh, not activate, you do have to wait a couple turns on cooldown to reapply it. But he does have this reflect damage buff and continuous heal as well. More useful for things like the fire knights than clan boss, but you know, it's still something. It's not a bad ability right there. So this guy is, is kind of a substitution if you can't find another champion for that uh, decrease attack. And now let's go to Increased defense. So increased defense for rares. Let's go to the barbarians here. So we have marked. I accidentally clicked on her earlier. Now we actually get to talk about her. So marked has a lot of things to offer. The strong version of decreased defense is going to be her best thing that she offers to the table. But she does have this uh, decreased defense debuff on her auto attack. It is the weak version though. So going back to that idea, it's better than nothing if you don't have these roles filled on her team. Better to have the weak version than, than nothing at all, but eventually you're probably going to work on trying to get some way to get the strong version of that. She also has a decreased accuracy debuff. Still a decent debuff to have. Um, it's not in my list of, you know, the most important buffs and debuffs for the clan boss, but it, it's still something and it, it is useful. And then her third ability right here, place a block debuff buff on all allies and a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns. And you can lower that down all the way to a three turn cooldown. So this is a phenomenal ability right here. So the combination of having that weak version of decreased defense, decreased accuracy, and that strong increased defense and block debuffs, she's got a lot to the table that she brings for the clan boss and absolutely a very reasonable choice to have in your team. Of course, you guys know how much I love Doom Screech. He is going to be a reasonable choice for the clan boss. He has that uh, strong version of decreased accuracy on his auto attack, which is really nice. But the main reason why you would use this guy is for his second ability. Fills the turn meter of all allies by 30% and places a 60% increased defense buff on all allies for two turns. This is an insane ability for tons of different areas in the game, and the clan boss is no exception. You could lower that down to a three-turn cooldown as well. And then uh, place a shield buff, tax all enemies, damage increases according to his HP. He is HP based, so he's not going to be squishy. Um, very, very solid choice. And then let's talk about the last buff on the list. The only one we have not talked about, that is going to be increased attack. Now, there are really not many choices for the strong version of increased attack when it comes to rare champions, which is why I really, really value this champion very highly in a lot of my lists. And that is going to be Spirit Host. She does have the strong version of increased attack on her second skill right here. Places a 50% increased attack buff on all allies for two turns. Can lower that down to a three turn cooldown. And she also has removes all debuffs from all allies. Places a block debuffs buff on all allies for one turn. So she's not really going to be DPS based. She is a support based champion. She does have that increased attack. 
but also she's one of the very few rare champions that has a speed aura that you could actually use and apply to the clan boss. Like I said earlier at the start of the video, rare champions are kind of, um, they really struggle with good auras and unfortunately Spirit Host is kind of one of the very few choices that we have for a speed aura from a rare champion. There's a couple of other choices, especially if you decide to go with something besides speed, like you can use Bulwark for his defense aura, uh, Aethel, Athel for her HP aura, but when it comes to speed, you get to knock out having a speed aura and also that increased attack buff, uh, both from Spirit Host. So, all right, well, I was only able to actually get through one of those categories today, uh, but hopefully I'll be able to fit the other two in the next video. But I throw a lot of information at you guys in the video today. So hopefully you guys have a bit of a better idea of what rares you can kind of start to pool together and combine well with other rares to form a good clan boss team. Really big theme to not only this video, but also the several videos that I talk about the clan DOS is it's important to work as a team and not just focus on the individual champions. You really want to make sure that you're filling all these roles that I talked about. They all synergize well together or you're going to notice that you are underperforming. So uh, in the next video, we'll get into a little bit more behind the auras. We got kind of through it. Uh, there's not really a whole lot, so we definitely should be able to really mostly focus on all the super good rare champions that offer lots of DPS through both poison and HP burn. Anyway, that's going to be it for the video today. I hope that you guys enjoyed, and if you guys did enjoy the video and you want more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to help out, tossing a quick like means more than you can imagine as well, so thank you to all of you guys to do that. And more videos should be popping up on the screen. Feel free to check them out. But if not, until next time, this is Salt of the Salty Guild, signing out.